In the immortal words of Edward R. Murrow, we must not confuse dissent with disloyalty. But President Trump is trying to confuse everybody. This weekend, he's tripling down on those attacks against the people he calls the four congresswomen. He says he doesn't think they're capable of loving our country. He's calling them names, questioning their patriotism, reminding everyone of his racist attack from last weekend. If this is what Trump wants the next 16 months to be about, is the press up to the challenge? That's going to be our big story today. As we cover the president, we have to cover his crowds as well. In fact, I think oftentimes the crowds are the more interesting story. Why they respond to his provocations, why they chant send her back. We need to show that it's all part of a pattern. This pattern can be traced back to 1989 when Trump wanted the Central Park Five executed. The five black and Hispanic teenagers were later exonerated. Now flash forward two decades. Trump promoted the lie that President Obama was not born in the United States a lie that many right-wing voters still say they believe. As recently as November 2017, advisors told the New York Times that Trump still questions the authenticity of Obama's birth certificate. Look, those portions of the president's track record on race are very well known. Uh, his line about Mexican rapists from his campaign launch event, his call for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the U.S., his smear of a, quote, Mexican federal judge who was born in Indiana, his s whole country's insult. And of course, the shameful event now just known shorthand as Charlottesville, which is the tarnishing the name of a great city. In the wake of his go back attack, I did see some networks and news outlets bringing back some of this, trying to connect the dots. The New York Times headline this morning, Trump employs an old tactic using race for gain. We are seeing some people telling that big story. But what about his false claim about large scale killing of white farmers in South Africa? That's not true, but it lined up with white supremacist talking points. What about his first pardon as president? Trump chose Joe Arpaio, the sheriff whose anti-immigrant tactics were so aggressive that he was frequently accused of racism before being voted out of office. What about Trump's own language describing immigrants? What about that time he reportedly grumbled that the migrants from Haiti all have AIDS? What about those times he said athletes who took a knee maybe shouldn't be in this country? Have you forgotten about that? Yes, he said that. You have to stand proudly for the national anthem. Well, you shouldn't be playing. You shouldn't be there. Maybe you shouldn't be in the country. What about retweeting racists and bigots? What about exaggerating urban crime? What about implying Puerto Rico is not part of the United States? What about referring to Omarosa as that dog? I could keep going and going with these examples, but the point is clear. There's a pattern going back decades. And with so many examples, it's kind of easy to forget some of them. The pattern is the big story. And the challenge for the press is to show the pattern. Look, Trump rebuts charges of racism by pointing to low unemployment rates and his support for criminal justice reform. That's an important part of the story. But journalists have to keep tracking the pattern that goes back decades. We have to keep observing, for example, the lack of diversity at the top of the Trump administration. And this is evident in nominations to the judicial branch as well. Here's a headline from two weeks ago in the Washington Post. Democrats questioning the absence of black or Hispanic nominees among Trump's judges. Well, it's not just Democrats that should be questioning that. All of this from the Central Park Five back then to the judges today are all part of the same big story. But when we get so focused on the, the story of the day or the story of the, the week, I fear that we lose sight of the really big story that's going on. Telling congresswomen to go back to where they came from is racist, but it's part of something much bigger that's going on.